Rise and shine, Value Farm family. Welcome back to another episode of The Farm. If you're new here, you are most welcome. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already and also turn your notification bells on. And of course, to all our returning subscribers, thank you so much. We really appreciate you guys so much. Thank you so much for being part of the family. Thank you so much for sharing the content, the ideas that we put up on this, this channel. Well, guys, we are back at the farm and it's just amazing. It's very early in the morning. It's, I think, seven o'clock. We are at the farm and it's just so good. It feels so good to be here. And of course, we have interesting ideas to share with you guys we've got so many questions from some of you who really want to start up your farms some of you wanted to also know about farming you guys have been inspired to do something similar to what we have here and of course today's topic as you can see from the title we are going to be talking about how to be a successful farmer and how have we come to this stage how have we managed to set up a farm like this one that's what we are going to be sharing with you guys our tips and tricks i have my co-director on standby who is also going to be sharing with us he's going to first introduce himself to you guys so that you can be able to know him if it's your first time seeing him here well hello everyone my name is gregory also known as grafton co-director of value farm this small little company here <laughs> and Champolo Goma Lorero, because many of you usually ask. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's early, it's bright now, the sun is coming up. Let me tell you guys, if you haven't experienced a sunrise at a farm, everybody has to experience that at least once in their lifetime. <laughs> get out of the cubicle, get out of your desk or your office, head to your nearest farm, whether mm -hmm. it's a dairy farm or standard agriculture, you mm -hmm. need to just be there. Mm -hmm. So you can see the, the, the morning mist in the grass, the smell of the grass, the smell of just the beginning of a new day. Ah, there's nothing quite like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's really nice, yeah. like waking up in the farm and also having, you know, animals around, seeing things moving, seeing things, you know, mud plying, yeah. all that. So, like I'd already told them that we are going to be talking about some tips of how to become a successful farmer. Maybe what I can also say for the beginning, if you're going to start up a farm, like we always say, start small but think big. Have a plan. That's what you have to know. Have a plan, write down what you're interested in, do your research. By the time you jump into farming, you know what you are going to do. So as long as you have a plan set, you have to begin immediately. Do not just you know, have the plan and procrastinate and keep postponing things. Success does not come to people who wait. So you need to always start immediately. We looked at so many things first before we started even buying the land. We looked at, okay, we are interested in farming. What are we going to look at? What are we, are we going to do livestock? Are we going to do maybe farming, agriculture, crops? That's what I mean. So we looked at ducks. We looked at uh, goats as well, but after going to visit other farms because research needs you to go to different places to see how people on ground are doing it because you can't start off something that you have no idea about so us going to different farms got us to an idea of starting piggery that's why we were like okay piggery is quite profitable when we talk to the farmers on ground they told us more we got so much information from them and we felt like okay we had an idea of doing ducks and goats but piggery is not, is also a good idea. Why can't we start it? So we researched more on how to start a pig farm. I myself, I'm a research junkie. Yeah. Um, while most people are home watching Sunday night football or the match of the week or all weekend, I'd rather be researching whatever I can find, research papers, YouTube videos, um, reaching out to other more experienced farmers. And um, so for, for me, that was the genesis of wanting to start this specific type of farm. But then also, logistically, the, the location of the farm itself played a big role as far as the type of animals that we can keep. Like for instance, initially, I never once considered having a fish farm. Though we visited multiple farms that also did fish farming. But after meeting with our friend Richard over at Ngudu Farm, mm -hmm. you know, that started to kind of creep in the back of my mind. But the way we've approached everything here, like we really truly practice the model, start small, because everything from planting to us deciding on which type of animals or livestock we're gonna keep here at the farm, we started very, very small. We tested it small first, even us planting our passion fruit 
or sweet potatoes or even soybeans. Everything we've done here, we've started very small, <laughs> tested the actual soil, see whether or not what we were going to try to grow was going to be viable, what we wanted to raise it was going to be viable, and then we took it from there. But this also brings us to the next actual main part about having a successful farm is managing the farm, yeah. managing the staff. When you're first starting out, sometimes you're the farmer, you're the owner, <laughs> you're doing everything for True. yourself. Now, that's actually, even though that's challenging, believe it or not, that's the easiest part. Because when you're the person in charge, when this is your land that you've purchased or you've leased, and you, everything is on your shoulders, you know exactly what you have to do mm. in order to make it happen. But then it gets tricky when you start to have to expand. True. When you start to hand over your baby to a <laughs> random stranger. <laughs> stranger to handle. No matter how much you research, no matter how many references these people bring you, at the end of the day, when you turn it over to somebody else, that's going to be there 100% of the time. Mm. And you yourself as the founder might be on the ground like 50 to 60, even 70% of the time. That's when things can get tricky. Like, True. So how do you mitigate that situation? Of course, we are always on the ground. At least we make sure we're not here all the time, but at least every day for some hours, we are here. We make sure that we do our rounds. But we... how did you come to actually recognizing that oh, that's what was needed? <laughs> no, I'll listen, tell the people everything. <laughs> that I, I, okay, let, let, I'll tell you guys what happened. <laughs> so in the very beginning, we actually had someone yeah. that was referred to us that was supposed to be a professional agronomist. Yeah. And um, so we were brand new, especially to this area, and we need to staff up the place itself. So our first initial acting manager was an agronomist and name only. Mm. And, um, but we didn't really, really truly realize that this person was not who they say they were. <laughs> Their yeah, CV true. did not match with the actual, actual. work output. Mm -hmm. So that's why we've actually made the actual commitment since that mistake, because that was a challenge, mm -hmm. since that time when we finally realized, oh, for three months, we were spending money. We put, we entrusted this particular person to be our manager, the field general on the ground. And he was a scammer, basically. True. Um, work would start at like the moment we left the farm. Nothing was being done. I remember one specific example. We purchased these uh, elephant, elephant grass. grass. And this particular fencing, it's like a milky um, type of a tree. I will show you guys the, the yeah, picture. Yeah, we'll show you. The we'll, video. we'll get the bureau for that. We'll, you'll see it in the bureau. Mm -hmm. But we purchased that for fencing. We also had the elephant grass. I spent so much money getting a truckload of elephant grass and a truckload of this specific, of these shrubs that you can use as a secondary fence, a natural fence. Yeah. And the first clue to me was that the elephant grass sat on the ground for like four weeks. At that point, I began to question whether or not we had the right person for the job. Yeah. But again, you don't know what you don't know. Right? Exactly. So it took almost like a month and a half for the elephant grass to actually be planted. And when it was being planted, it was planted in the wrong location. Yes. So almost like $300 worth of actual cuttings went to waste. And if you calculate the cost for transportation, so all in all, we lost about $1,000 that way from having an ineffective manager. manager. So the lesson there, we recognize immediately, right? Mm -hmm. If you're going to have somebody in charge of your farm, you yourself need to be in charge of your operation. True. And that's the reason I decided that no matter what happened, come rain or high water, and believe me, there were waters in these streets. The roads are not paved. We've been stuck in the mud. <laughs> We're falling into trenches. Yeah. But rain or shine, we, we had to, to be on the ground. And that was the beginning of the turnaround of this little company that we know as Value Farm today. Yeah. More to that, if you're hiring workers at the farm, 
I know most of the people have been asking us, how do you get your good good workers? <laughs> Guys, it has not been as easy as you think. Not easy. Not easy at all. Yeah. Starting from the builders, then also, of course, caretakers, the people who go to the garden. It has not been easy. Of course, you get these workers from recommendations, maybe from different farms when they recommend you other people, or maybe someone just approaches you and tells you, I can do this and that. Yes. Most of them, of course, do not have the CVs, but they need the job. Sometimes we just offer them like to do the labor work, like going to the garden, planting stuff. A trial. Yeah, like a trial. Yeah. So you don't have to trust them 100 percent, my fellow farmers. Well, in the, in the great word, I believe Ronald Reagan, huh? trust but verify. <laughs> <laughs> that I've, is so true. I've learned that no matter who it is, Everybody's going to tell you they could do everything under the sun. You ask somebody right now, hey, can you fly? <laughs> for the, if it's for them to get a job, they're going to say, I yes. can fly. I'll fly the highest. I'll even bring you back the moon. And then you realize, okay, fine. Maybe this person can fly. They convince themselves, so they convince you to some degree. That's how we were in the beginning. But do you think, is it only in Uganda or even elsewhere? What do you guys think? I think it's more prevalent here. <laughs> because, it is common because here. From my experience, listen, I love, you know, I love my Ugandan people. That's why I'm here. I'm not trying to disparage anyone. Mm -hmm. It's just the economy here is so tough. Jobs are so scarce. You know, if somebody finds an opportunity to have gainful employment, they're going to say and do whatever they have to to try to get in. It's the same thing, guys. Even in the U.S., when you go for a job interview, if they ask you how many words you can type a minute, you know, you're going to type. <laughs> You know, but typing slow is not going to cost your uh, your company, you know, thousands upon thousands of dollars, right? Mm. And output. So that was the trick, making sure that the people you met, you give them a trial. Yeah. And you be strict about it. If the person you bring in, let me give you guys a recent example. We brought in someone that came highly qualified, has the CV, mm -hmm. went to school for farming, in fact, we thought this person was going to end up being our overall manager. manager. But then very quickly, within a matter of, of weeks, we realized that the salary that we were paying this specific acting manager, this person literally just wanted to go and be a digger, basically, meaning work in the field mm -hmm. and not really take any actual leadership, any accountability. In fact, he was starting to become a bad influence on some on one of our most productive workers so we have to True. make the difficult decision to actually part ways because culture is everything if you can't get the buy-in from your staff that this is one team one family no matter how productive that person might be but if they have the wrong attitude mm -hmm. if they don't believe in the project that you're currently working on then the, the fit doesn't work then they have to go no matter how much you might personally exactly. like that person mm but it comes to the overall, the greater good of the organization than your specific individual care yeah. for one person. Has to. Those decisions are that. always tough, but you gotta do And by the way, to, to add on that one, yeah. like as a farmer, if you have your own farm there, and maybe there's one particular person who is maybe spreading the bad attitude to others, eliminate that person immediately. immediately. Do not wait, because what happens here, they, they're going to sabotage everyone at the farm yeah. and you realize that everyone is against everything that is what going on the farm yeah. so what we have realized whenever we try to remove the people who are bringing bad energy to the workers within when they're out productivity gets back to back normal. To, more, to normal but but also you may have that one disgruntled employee that are not pulling their weight instead of actually trying to change that person you'll find that the, the mindset is being sabotaged by that one person who might be unhappy. I'll give you guys a very real example. Not that long ago, mm -hmm. we almost had a full uprising at the farm. True. Because this one particular individual who had been here for a very long time, and he got to the point where he didn't want to be here anymore. So instead of resigning, you know, he just decided not to do any work. He would just disappear periodically. And then when he got checked on those behaviors, he actually tried to organize the entire staff to quit this place at the same, same time. time. So when we found out that's what was happening, obviously we had to make a change, you know, and that change was for the best. However, we would have never found out about this if we were not on the ground True. and into what was happening at the farm. So that's a very important lesson for you guys, you know. I know there's a lot of my brothers and sisters that are in the diaspora. 
we get a lot of messages, emails, WhatsApp messages. You know, I don't care if it's your mother, your brother, your sister. Yeah. You need to make sure you check what's happening on the ground. Because there's, I get far too many phone calls and emails and messages from people, right? That tell you that, oh my God, this happened. And they were in the UK and came back and there was nothing left. Mm. You understand? So I don't want that to happen to you guys because it's a very painful experience. True. You know how hard you guys work. Mm. It's not easy. No matter what career you have, no matter where you are, you know, if you put your heart and soul into something, you want it to be fruitful. That is so true. And the feeling of being used and taken advantage of is never a good one. Mm -hmm. And the best way to do that, number one, you know, you can have some family, but I believe in always working with, with the person who's most qualified mm -hmm. for that position. Just because someone's your brother doesn't mean he's fit to be your manager. True. Just because somebody's your wife doesn't mean that person's fit, fit to, to be, be the boss of everybody at the at your organization. True. You know, your CV, your experience, your productivity, that's why I should get you the position you hold within yeah. any organization. Mm. And that's the way we actually try to run this place. Wow, that is really so good. Then another thing that I also wanted to put across that most people really ignore that has really helped us here. Hiring the workers, where do we get these people from? Yes, we need to help people within the community, but these are maybe casual workers who come here once in a while. But people whom you entrust with your animals, with your crops at the farm, it's better for you to get them from far away. At least get them not near the farm because most cases, the people who stay within are the people who are going to steal your animals, steal your birds and take them back home easily if you're not there. If you don't have the security, if you don't have the CCTV cameras, you're in a high risk. That's what I should really say. So most of our workers are not from within. Most of them are like from upcountry, north, eastern, Kenya. We try to really get them from far so that at least by the time someone really gets comfortable with the place, they cannot really, it's hard treating your workers appropriately and making them very comfortable yeah. with your vision is one of the things that we have put That's in this That's a major form. factor. That's a very good point. Yeah. Because anybody who's ever worked here will tell you guys, you know, as a, as an ownership group, as a directors here, you set the tone. And for me, I can't stand to see people treat the animals. I don't even want somebody yelling at the animals, yeah. let alone another person. You know, mutual respect, making sure that these folks on the ground see that you respect them paying people on time, on time. So something that's foreign to this region where you know everybody gets paid on the 15th no excuses yeah but respect is a key factor yeah you should never treat any grown men or women as if they're your children true and that's the that's that was the cultural difference here mm -hmm. because if you're here in ug or if you're not living abroad you know in this country the boss is the boss He's the boss <laughs> <laughs> they own your neck there's no room for you to breathe. They yeah. speak to you any old ways. Me, part of my dream was to come here to actually try to recreate a different environment. I wanted to create a company that was that felt like you were working for an American farm or American organization here in Uganda. And, um, and I think we have been able to accomplish that. But then it took the mind of everyone. You know, yeah. Not just us treating everybody with respect. But the staff, and that's something we tell everybody before yeah, yeah. they even start here. True. This is a family. You need to be able to fit into the dynamic. You know, I don't want any of my managers cursing, yelling, flipping out on anyone. If somebody can't meet the expectation, then there's a way you can manage that situation. But most importantly, everybody needs to be treated with respect. Respect. And be treated like a human being. And we do the work with one heart as one unit. Crux of it. You know, you work hard, and after work, you could you could hang out. You can have fun mm -hmm. and make it a, a, a fun experience because this is hard work. That is so true. You don't want to have anybody ever feel like, you know, they're being stepped on I literally know. It's not, every minute it's not of the good. day. So that's how we try to approach it. Yeah. Then also, more to that, the culture we've created here. Yeah. Like everyone embraces. Even the workers themselves really say, oh my God, this is quite different. This is like a corporate farm. <laughs> because of the respect that we show them. Then also, of course, once in a while, we come and talk to them. We talk to the, we set meetings, we talk to them. We still tell them what their goals are, what our goals are for the farm 
and we also inspect our animals with them. So of course we have different people in different departments dif by taking care of the pigs, the birds, taking care of the goats, the cows and the sheep. So at least we go to every department, we also evaluate what they are doing that side. If you're not doing so well that side, then maybe we can rotate, but we work as a team. That is another thing. So if you're in a farm, work as a team and always treat your guys with respect. Yes. That's, the, that's, that's what it comes down to, respect. And if someone is on your ground, and if they don't care about your animals or your crops, mm -hmm. do they really need to be there? No. Right? Because let's face it, guys, seeds to plant are not cheap. Mm -mm. Animals to actually stock up your property are not cheap. Do you guys know, like right now in Uganda, like the average sheep in this country starts at like 300,000 shillings? Thousand. And for those of you in terms of like USD, that's what almost a hundred dollars plus yeah. for one sheep. Not even it's a year expensive. ago, mm. you used to be able to get a sheep for like half of that, mm -hmm. right? And so, you know, it's not cheap to buy livestock no matter where you are. So when you have them, you need people on your farm that actually care about your animals as if they were their own animals. And if you see something, that strikes you differently, then you really need to step in. Because at the end of the day, yes, these animals are going to go to slaughter at some point for breeding. Yeah. But while they're in your care, it is your responsibility to make sure that they get the best care. That is so true. And that's what it comes down to. Yes. Another thing, another tip we're here to share, guys. Successful <laughs> tips for successful farmers. As a farm, you have your animals, you have your birds. What do you need? You need security. So what has really helped us here so much because not everyone is happy with every project that you have. The neighbors, some of them may not be happy with, you know, your progress. Human but nature. Human nature. So security-wise, if you're a farmer out there, at least invest in security. Make sure at least, especially in the night, like when your animals are there, at least invest in something like the, the physical security guards to come and guard your farm. Yes. For those of you who can afford it, but understand capital is a challenge. Yeah. But by the same token, that also come with you scaling, right? Yeah. If you're starting out, you have one goat, one sheep, you're not going to need a guard. But by yeah. the same token, at least you need to either live very near or be on the ground. But if you're someone who's like a compiler farmer, like most Ugandans <laughs> are, right? And we fall into that category temporarily ourselves. Mm -hmm then you need to have adequate security. You need to have to make sure proper structures. that you have the proper structures to keep your animals safe, safe. and secure. Mm -hmm. And you also need to be able to have some basic fencing to keep your, what's yours in, mm -hmm. what you don't want out. But it comes down to this, you know, when you make this commitment again, you know, and farming, the adage is true. You mm -hmm. reap what you sow. Exactly. If you don't put anything into the ground or into the actual farm itself, you're not going to reap anything, anything from it. Anything at all. So, you know, it comes down to, number one, the passion. You can have all the money in the world and you have a farm and it fails because you have poor management. I'm yeah. sure you guys have read that, you've seen it, and it's a fact. True. How do you prevent that? Well, number one, Make sure that you have the right people even before you start. True. You know, don't just take anybody who wants a job. <laughs> you want to take the people who actually care. True. About what you're doing you as do. much as you do. And that's easier said than done, but it, it, it's possible. Yeah. You know, you may go through a few people, but when you find the right ones, you take care of them and you make sure you hold on to those people. Yeah. Wow. I think we've really talked so much. So guys, this goes back to you. In case you have other tips, share them down below so that we can also hear from you guys how you've been successful, how you think things can be done as a farmer, as one, a successful one farmer. One thing, I'm sorry to interrupt you, partner, it's but okay. this is something else I think. I think, the, I think in your toolbox as a farmer, mm -hmm. flexibility is your ally. Mm -hmm. You can start out by wanting to do an apiary for bees or you want, might want to raise birds. But you know what? You have to be nimble on your feet and in your mind. Because you okay. know something? What you might think you may want to do as a farmer, the situation on the ground is going to dictate where you go. True. But don't be so rigid. <laughs> if you live in True. an area that's fully waterlogged mm -hmm. and you know, you're surrounded by nothing but swamps. And if you're in your heart, you wanted to rear goats. If that environment is not conducive to goats, you might have to shift the cattle. Yes. If you're able. So don't just be so stuck in your ways. <laughs> if Mother Earth is telling you, hey, Please. tapping you on your shoulders, mm -hmm. you might not want to continue to go against the grain. So, you know, find out what works in your area, 
what the market is in your region. Okay, be flexible. Be flexible the way you manage people. Uh -huh. Be flexible the way you run your organization. <laughs> Don't be rigid. People are different. It, uh -huh. Because people in this country and around the globe, you know, rigidity <laughs> is never a sexy way to live. You yeah, know? true. You want to be flexible. You want to be, you know, able to just quickly adapt to your situation. Because let's face it, that's the kind of animals you want to have on your farm. Those true. that can adapt to any environment and those that have flexibility in yeah. terms of why you can feed them where you can graze them, how you can graze them. And yeah, that's like the best advice I have for you guys Wow, today. Flexibility is key. Wow. My advice, my piece of advice. Yes. <laughs> you should always keep learning. As a farmer, it is a learning process. Learning does not stop. That's true. In case you have your traditional ways of doing things, and maybe there's a modern technology that has come up, and learn the old one. Start with the new one, you know, because things are changing for the better. So keep learning, keep learning, and learning, and learning. That's what I should, I should really tell everyone That's out so there. That's so true. Listen, I know me, as a young Gemini in my day, I was not <laughs> always as flexible. I know. But I paid the price. But again, what my dad used to always tell me, be smart enough to know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. And what you don't know, if you choose not to learn what you don't know, you're always going to be in the dark. So and what I've experienced here, and in my travels around, you know, the, the globe, I've been afforded that opportunity with my past career. You might believe in doing something one way, right? But if somebody else can teach you something different, you owe it to yourself and mm -hmm. your organization to, again, have an open mind and open heart and actually learn to do something differently. Because mm -hmm. let's face it, initially when we came to Uganda, when I came to UG, every piggery farm that I visited or that I've researched did not believe in IMO as a commercial enterprise. Yeah. But then again, where I've been to other countries and other places where that was the actual chosen method. Yeah. And so now we decided to go with that path. I was going to do the actual brick and mortar yeah. with cement on the ground. <laughs> but the more we researched, the more we spoke to people, we had to move off of our stance. And this was the best decision that they ever could have made. And it's made the difference in the farm. So, oh, wow. That's, a, that's, a, that's another key nugget there for you guys. <laughs> guys, we have talked. Those tips are real enough for you guys. So if you want part two, we can definitely do it for you next time. Because yeah. course, we don't want to make this so much. There's a lot we can share. If we start sharing all our tips here, we shall sleep here till tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but that is enough for today. But yeah. still, leave your comments down below. Your ideas and what you really think about being a successful farmer. What things that you think we've left out that maybe someone out there would also want to know. But we love you guys so much. Keep subscribing, yes. sharing with your friends and family. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Tell them that Value Farm is here to share all the ideas in farming. And of course, we want you to be better farmers. We want you to be the successful farmers here. We want a big family. We want to come to your farms as well. Because whatever we are doing here, we want to see the real thing that you guys are also doing, maybe different in your farm, so that we can also come and visit, pay you a visit. What do you think? I agree. Yes. That's it. Wow. So subscribe if you haven't already. Turn your notification bells. Till next time. Bye. Bye.